you know, transitioning from single family to multifamily, you don't have to start like first three, then five, then seven. You could honestly go from single family all the way up to investing passively in 300 units if you wanted to. So what I'd like for you guys to do is expand your mind, your horizons, and believe in yourselves because you could do it. And the only thing stopping you is you. Like Napoleon Hill says, if whatever the mind of man could believe and conceive, the mind of man could achieve. Exactly. And I truly believe that. I believe it for you guys. I wish it for you guys. And uh, Hello, everyone. Uh, as you're coming in today. Uh, go ahead and let us know what city and state you're coming in from. Just let us know in the chat box. Go into your chat box down in the box below and enter the contact information that you have. And also, if you would, just let us know what city and state you're coming in from. Thank you for that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started in just a, a couple minutes here. In the meantime, while we wait, uh, go ahead and enter your contact information in the chat box. And kind of like, you know, share your information. And that way we have a place that we could reach you at later. All those that do give us a quick announcement, all those that do give us their email address, let us know if you'd like to receive a video. The video is basically uh, how to get started in multifamily investing webinar video. And it's free um, just for showing up today. So if you're interested in the video, please let us know that in the chat box as well. Thank you so much for joining us. This is Multifamily Investor Nation. I'm your host for today. Well, I'm your host every day. This is Carlos Di Reynoso. Today's topic is going to be raising capital for your multifamily deals. So as I was saying, this is uh, Multifamily Investor Nation, uh, Monday Meetups. I'm your host, Carlos Di Reynoso. And today the topic is going to be on raising capital for your multifamily deals. It's an awesome topic um, to delve into and dive into. It's something that's going to be super helpful, not just in syndications, which is the main reason why we're all gathered here today, uh, but also because it's going to be a great tool in your in your tool belt for any future endeavors that you might aspire to. So even for your own business, it's going to be good to be able to raise capital for your business and expand on that as well for, for future growth, obviously. So as you know, as you guys are coming in, please do us a favor. Uh, go ahead and put your contact information here in the chat box. I'm going to go ahead and do exactly that as well. Bear with me for a quick moment. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my information as well. And there you go. This will be my info. And you guys don't have to share as much as I do, you know, any information that you could share. And what we could do is, if you like, we could put it on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, you know, if there's anything you'd like to promote and make sure that we'll put it in the YouTube notes. So if you would like it to be in the YouTube notes, go ahead and let us know that as well. All right, guys. So without further ado, I want to just thank everyone for taking the time to be with us today. To be honest, it's always great to have you guys here with us. It just makes the show carry on so much better. Uh, the meetup, if you will. And it helps me become more interactive and, and it just makes an all around better uh, show for everyone. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. And as I was saying, today, we're going to be talking on the topic of raising capital. And as you're coming in, go ahead and let us know, give us your contact information over here in the chat box. Just go to the bottom of the screen. Go to your chat box and enter your contact info. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So today's content, raising capital for multifamily deals. The most important thing that I want to show you guys is uh, what we call the investor triad. And what we're going to go ahead and do is jump right into that, if you will, and tell you a little bit more about it. So first and foremost, you know, who am I and why am I here, right? So my name is Carlos Di Reynoso. I am a co-organizer for Multifamily Investor Nation here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm also a um, a capital raiser. I've raised capital on this 240-unit uh, 506 offering in San Antonio, Texas. I've also, in the past, purchased and disposed of four, five, and six units in Miami, Florida, and again, disposed of those. And now I'm looking to syndicate or invest passively in a syndication and gain the experience that way. All right. So yeah, uh, there's still people coming in. So as you're coming in, go ahead and let us know what uh, city and state you're coming in from. 
Thank you for joining us today. This is Multifamily Investor Nation. Again, I'm your host, Carlos D. And if you would, uh, Giovanni and everyone, as you're coming in, go ahead and find your chat box. And in the bottom, if you would, share your contact information there. I've gone ahead and shared my contact info as well. And I wanted you guys to know, feel free to you know reach out if you have any questions or concerns. And also to let you know that, as I was saying previously, you know, I am a, uh, I've raised capital on deals. I'm also the author of the book, Selling Secrets You Can't Afford to Miss. Uh, basically a book I wrote to give back to the uh, single family industry after uh, it's been such a great industry to me. And I've been recently interviewed on the best real estate investing advice ever on the Joe Fairless podcast. Uh, here's a photo with myself and Ash Patel. <laughs> and every time I see this photo, it takes me back. And I swear, I remember exactly uh, how much fun this was. So if you do get a chance to be interviewed on the Best Ever Podcast, definitely give it a chance. Uh, it's definitely going to do a lot uh, as far as networking is concerned to help you out there. And I was uh, a panelist on the Multifamily Investor Nation Summit 2022 in January of that year. And on the topic of raising capital, and the reason I bring that up is because obviously I do have some experience on the topic and I do have boots on the ground experience as well, if you will. So I was uh, also a panelist on the topic of raising capital and finding money for your deals. In the summit, I was a moderator and we had very special guests like uh, Timothy Lyons, Chris Larson, and other great uh, experienced investors on there as well. So the main topic that we're here to discuss today is how do we raise capital for deals, right? And why is that important? So in the investor uh, raising capital situation, we have what we call uh, the investor triad. Uh, some of you might have heard about it, but what I'd like for you guys to do, if you will, uh, briefly, uh, just kind of draw yourself a little mental triangle, if you will. Uh, you could do it on paper if you'd like. And on that triangle, the top right, on the top pinnacle of the triangle, if you will, write the word no, like knowledge, no. On the left corner bottom, write the word like. And also, there's still more people coming in, so that's great. And also, on the right-hand corner, write the word trust. And the reason I'd like you to do that is because I want you to get a good idea of the investor triad. And then I'd like to ask you, of the no, the like, and the trust, show of hands, who would say that like is most important? Uh, for people to like you, who would say that's most important? And we have uh, Heath over here. He's got his hand raised uh, with the fish in his hand. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, so like, okay, and then trust. Who would, Show of hands, who thinks trust is most important in raising capital? All right, thank you for that, guys. And actually, the most important thing is no. And the reason that's most important is because before anyone could get to like you or trust you, they must get to know you. And that brings up the most important theme here is to get the word out about who you are and what you're currently doing in your space. So in this case, we're obviously talking about multifamily investing, but it could also be if you're in single family sales, you're a wholesaler, whatever your platform is, make sure that you capitalize on that and get the word out about what you're doing. Because if people don't know you, they're never going to go past the point uh, to be able to like you and then further trust you. So once you get an investor to know you, they get to a point where they you know, further go and they feel more comfortable around you. They like you now. And then once they like you, they found out enough about you, then they're considering they're gaining trust in you. And, and I've had that where an investor comes up to me, this last deal that I raised capital on. And basically the uh, managing partner saw what I, you know, that I have a meetup. They saw my YouTube channel. They saw my LinkedIn and they saw that I'm, I was interested. I literally said, I'm interested in raising capital on deals. And I wouldn't just do the raising capital. I could also be boots on the ground. I could do acquisitions and I could also do asset management or even investor relations. And when I said that, it everything changes. They reached out to me and they said, Carlos, would you like to raise capital on a deal with us? And you guys, I know it sounds like a far-fetched story, 
but it's really that simple is to let people know what you're doing and get the word out about it. And if you're raising capital, let them know, hey, listen, I could raise capital on your deals. I already have, in my case, I already had uh, 1.5 in, in, in hard commitments or as, actually in soft commitments, but the money was ready to go. So that helped me when they called upon me, say, hey, I'm ready to go. Yes, I do have money ready to deploy. And I had my own money to invest and the opportunity came and I was ready. So that's very important. I think guys that let everybody know what you're doing everywhere that you are on social media, but also, you know, go further into other people's groups as well. Um, and let the, let other people know what you're doing. And then once you get part uh, past the trust, then this, this part kind of goes back into the no part. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, how do you do that? How do you know, like, trust somebody and then go back to knowing them again? And the only way that's possible is if we're referring to uh, the people that they refer to us. So what ends up happening is those people who, who ended up trusting us, and they knew us, they liked us, they ended up trusting us. Now they're willing to put money in our deals. And because they're willing to put money in our deals and they've had a good experience, now they bring other past, other friends, other colleagues, other investors, and now your investor pool starts to grow. And then, so, you know, how do you get people to know who you are and raising capital capital from high net worth individuals? This is basically the, the content in its, in its core, right? Uh, so here's, I'm going to go through this briefly. Look locally through newspapers and magazines and look for influential people. And then find ways to network with those people because if they're influential, they have other influential friends as well. So that's a great way to grow uh, your network. And, and again, think of this as you're growing your network, but you're also raising capital. It's almost hand in hand because when it, the deal comes in and you're ready to uh, for your capital call, everyone who knows you and trusts you will be ready to deploy that capital. So you've established that trust. You could come to meetups like this one and participate in meetups like this one and you know kind of st stay, stick around toward the end for the breakout rooms. Also with my uh this this meetup is I recorded and I posted on my YouTube channel. So you could also go to YouTube and see past videos on the topic of everything from getting started uh to asset management to disposing of your of your acquisitions. So it's a great place to go. Just go to Carlos D. Reynoso and uh, like and subscribe. And if possible, leave me a nice comment there. Uh, you're going to have a lot of value coming out of that channel for sure. Yeah, so participate in meetups. Provide, this is a great one, provide local seminars. And when I say local seminars, sometimes people say, well, I mean, I don't know enough about anything to actually talk about the topic long enough to host a seminar, but you'd be surprised because you might know a little bit, but your little bit is a lot more than somebody who's just fresh, you know, uh, fresh to, to this industry. So what you know could be the catapult or the catalyst, if you will, uh, for their experience in, in multifamily, and they could be learning through you. You could be their source to come to this knowledge. Uh, so I highly recommend, and even in this book that I'll recommend later, I'll come back to it again, but it's the best ever apartment syndication book from Joe Fairless, the same gentleman that I was uh, interviewed on the, the podcast. This book is amazing. And it's, I call it like the Bible of syndication for real. Let me see if I can show you how thick it is. Um, see how thick this book is? Um, and it's a great book. It's kind of like soup to nuts, everything you need to know about syndications, including forms and bonus material. I highly recommend that book. I've read it twice and I listen to, uh, to it on audible. Uh, most times that I go for a jog, highly recommended. And one of the main things that it talks about is having a thought leadership platform. Basically all it is, is something like this, where you host a meetup and you speak on a topic that you're well-versed on. And you add value that way to people. Once people see that you're authentic, that you're a real person, that you know you know what you're talking about, uh, what ends up happening is you start creating a relationship. 
And again, this business is a relationship business. So you want to make sure to uh, nurture those relationships. Uh, and later on, those could be potential investors on your deals. You guys, if there's any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box or raise your hand and we'll, you know, we'll gladly jump into them. We're almost done here. And uh, basically, you know, when we're talking about this, it's kind of like, think of it like, uh, like kind of breaking the ice for a topic that we could discuss further in the breakout rooms uh, shortly after this. Uh, so please stick around for the breakout rooms. Uh, they're, they're always very helpful. And uh, a lot of questions get answered there. Uh, participate in the meetups, uh, workshops, join a community of like-minded people. So there's groups that you could join. I'm part of strategic partnership with David Monroe. David is a CCIM instruction, instructor for uh, the CCI, CCIM Institute. Um, he's also got his own business. He's been a broker in the past and he's syndicated his own deals. What I love about that particular community is that I pretty much know everyone beforehand in that community is a group of our fellow colleagues, if you will. So it's a great place to network and um, and also raise capital because everybody who's there is experienced in raising capital, is experienced in doing deals. And um, they could even you know add uh, tips to help you or even better, uh, they could partner with you on deals. So I would definitely highly recommend that. There is a fee, but uh, you know, with all the courses that I've researched over the years of most gurus, uh, this was the uh, least expensive and the one that I felt I was getting the most value for the, for the, the investment. Uh, you can speak at local events. Uh, so I've done this, uh, local events. So if you know that your friend is hosting a meetup somewhere, uh, let them know, hey, uh, Steve, you know, um, you're going to be talking about apartments investing and you know, I could talk on raising capital. Would you mind if I join you? The great thing about that is now Steve uh, has kind of like meshed his um, group or his investor community with mine and we both grow. So that's a great thing. You know, you're capitalizing, you're leveraging the connections on either sides. Um, so I was featured in a local magazine, Atlanta uh, Real Estate, I believe it's called. and um, that's something else you can do. You could actually pay for something like that, or even better, if someone reaches out to you and uh, invites you to to be interviewed. That's what happened to me. And to do that again, just simply get the word out about what you're doing. I have a lot of social media pages, uh, for uh, Facebook pages alone. I have LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and uh, and that being said, if there's anyone that I could introduce you to or um recommend or anything that i could help you with by all means reach out to me directly um and i could definitely introduce you to uh, some of my colleagues on linkedin as well all right uh, this is a tough one it's expensive if you're getting started which is direct mail but there's a least expensive way to do direct mail and you're not doing bulk but what you do is you find one specific property that you really, really want and you mail to that one property and that's all you do for the next month. That's the least expensive way to do it. Or you could you know, join a, um, a direct mail list and those you know, are usually in excess of hundreds to thousands of dollars. And it usually takes you know, a few, um, what's it called, campaigns before it actually starts to take off. Uh, but if you're patient enough, yes, I, I have seen results from that, especially as a realtor. When I first got started over 20 something years ago, that's what I started doing door knocking and direct mail. And yes, it was really good to get started with um, dinner events. This is quick dinner events. You take your investors that have already invested with you. You have them bring colleagues or uh, friend investors uh, to dinner and you invite them to a steak dinner somewhere. What's great about that? You ask for two. You ask two questions to your uh, current investors. What did you like about investing with us? What didn't you like? Excuse me. What'll happen there? They'll let you know what they liked, and the investors are going to say, "Oh, look how great they." Uh, my friend invested with, in this case, my company, Canis Major Investment Capital. They had a great experience, uh, and now. 
they're referring me as well. So now these people are going to trust you like the pyramid at the very top. They're going to go from trusting you all the way to knowing you and again, investing right away. I've had people contact me and just tell me right away, Hey, I, I want to invest in your deals. I'll have 50,000. You know, how can we do this? And, you know, you definitely want to establish a relationship. You can't just put someone in a deal. You got to show proof that you have an established relationship. And that's why I like to have my meetings uh, recorded on Zoom. I highly recommend you have your meetings recorded on Zoom. And that's twofold. One, you have proof of the conversation. And two, you could show that you had a previous relationship with this person that you're now investing with. So it acts as a good record of, of, of communication with the people. Um Host a podcast, which is kind of like what I do here. Uh, this is a meetup. We meet the first Monday of every month. You could also have a YouTube channel. Uh, here's a great one. I tried this a few times and it was great pu publicity of nothing else, uh, but it put me in contact with a lot of great business owners is attend the Chamber of Commerce meetings. Uh, you're going to learn a lot. They're usually like anything from free to like $25 or $50 max, but you're going to gain a lot of a lot of knowledge and you're going to gain a lot of business owner, uh, friends, colleagues that you can let, later um, bounce ideas off of, if you will. Volunteer locally. Uh, I was a soccer coach for over five years. Ever, uh, you know, since my son was was playing soccer, I volunteered. That was great. Uh, you know, I was able to talk to the parents, let them know what I did, and yes, I was able to score deals. Um or any other leadership positions for that matter and connect with local real estate attorneys, CPAs, financial advisors, and other high net worth individuals that should do it. If that doesn't get you uh, uh, more opportunities to raise capital, nothing will guys trust me. It's been tried and true. The, these are uh, tips that I've learned from my mentor, Dan Hanford, which is the person in charge of multifamily investor nation. Uh, he's one of the managing partners. He's also uh, in charge of um, strategic partners, which is the investment arm to this company. Giovanni, do you have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. And, uh, and, you know, these are things that I learned from him and then I share with you guys. So trust me, these are tried and true methods, uh, multimodal approaches as well that do give good results and are going to help build your business. And my suggestion is do a little bit of each of these um, and try to capitalize on the ones that give you the best results. All right, guys, that concludes raising capital for your multifamily deals. Next month's topic, we hope that you'll join us for that one. It's going to be securing capital for those multifamily deals. And it's a big difference because in securing capital, we're going more in debt. Uh, into exactly what you got to do to get the physical uh, capital um, into your deals so you could um, close them as soon as possible and that there's no delays in the process with your capital. And uh, so, yeah, securing capital for your multifamily deal will be our next month's topic. Thank you for joining us. If there's no further questions, we, oh, okay, before we do that, just want to say, those of you who arrived a little bit later, uh, please find the chat box at the bottom of the screen. If you would please share any contact information that you would like to share. And if you do have a business and you would like to promote that business, by all means, also put that there. And what I'll do is after the video is edited, I'll post it in the show notes on my YouTube channel. So that's going to be evergreen. People are going to continue to see it. And hopefully, you know, if they find, you know, hopefully they'll be able to reach out to you. So it's it has worked. That's the strategy that I used um, when I used to listen to the best ever real estate podcast uh, daily. And what I would do is as soon as I heard it, I would call in or email or text the, the person that was interviewed, um, the talent, if you will. And I would say, listen, I just heard your podcast. I'm really interested in what you're doing. And then, you know, since I host my own meetup, I said, I would like to uh, interview you and have you on the show. Would you like to join us? So in the future, you're going to continue seeing how investors come to the show and they add value because they're bringing their experience and they, you know, kind of like um, 
answer questions and and talk from real world experience as well. So that's one of the great things about you know the YouTube channel and also this meetup. All right. So if there's uh, no further questions, uh, this is my contact information here. Uh, my Facebook page. Um, if you want to schedule an appointment, here's my Calendly link. Um, I have a new email. If you guys want to reach me through there, I don't know. For some reason, Reynoso Realty has been having trouble. You can reach me at Kenneth's Major Investing. Kenneth's Major Investing down here at iCloud.com. And uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and stop share. All right, guys, any questions uh, or anything that you guys would like to discuss uh, in further detail? Yeah, I do have, I have a question. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, in general, do you hold property for long term or um, do you buy, like, rent, buy renovate, and flip, or what's your, your term? Yeah, great question. So, my strategy is buy and hold. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that's the best experience. But when it comes to syndications, the buy and hold are going to be, it's more temporary, right? So you don't want to hold it for 20 or 30 years. In syndications, what, what's generally going on is that you're going to have, um, I guess you could say you could flip it, you know, a slow flip, if you will, uh, three to five years down the line. Um, so like, like me, my idea in the future is if I find that perfect property that, oh my God, the returns are unheard of and it's such great returns. It, you know, as a realtor and as a broker, that's how I've always thought. I'm gonna keep that one, right? But if I see a deal that's doing good and is getting better, but it's not my favorite deal, like everything is not like beautiful on it, I'll I'll pass that one on, and I'll dispose of it. I'll sell that one, mm -hmm. and in selling that one, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the returns, the profits, and reinvest that money immediately into another deal. And I'm going to try to do that as long as I could um, for as long as I could really. I mean, if, if I could, which is one thing I love about real estate is that you could do this forever, right? You could be 70 years old and still uh, be a passive investor, or you could be, you know, 80 years old and still syndicate deals. You know what I mean? So I believe that this is a beautiful industry where if you love it, like I'm passionate, I eat, drink, sleep, this stuff. Um, if you're passionate about it, you could do it forever. And for me, retirement's going to be like, I'll still be traveling the world, <laughs> but I'll still be uh, syndicating because I really love real estate. So that's my thing. Yeah. Great question, Heath. Thank you for that. Do you usually um, go after a certain size property? Do you, you know, do yeah. pods or? Anything? Yeah, right. So when, when you're thinking syndications, like for the most part, what we do is, is uh, 100 units plus. Right. So our, what our criteria, this is the nutshell, right? A hundred plus units, uh, only multifamily. That's all I focus on, um, in the Southeastern regions. So anything from Florida all the way to Texas and some Arizona, um, as well. So the Southeastern states basically. And the reason why is because those are landlord friendly states. Generally, you're going to have better luck than in, in states where it's tenant-friendly states. Those are the states uh, where you see a lot of times uh, the uh, tenants uh, are at a tendency at sufferance, they call it, and they overstay their welcome and they're not even paying the rent anymore. And kind of like the system is kind of like on their side, right? Where they have the benefits. In the southern states, you have more landlord-friendly states where if someone is not paying the rent the first month, uh, you could begin the eviction process right away. So the, you know that's why I like the southeast. Plus, I'm in Georgia, and Georgia, you know, connects with other southeastern states, so it's just very practical to to have this as a hub, right? And yeah. kind of like I'm imitating like Southwest Airlines, if you will. <laughs> like you know, this is my hub, and then from here I invest. But that's a great question. And tell me, because basically it's just us now here. So if you would, um, he, since you got the floor real quick, tell me a little bit about you and what you're currently doing in the multifamily space, if you would. Yeah, I actually kind of started out 
in um, about 2006 uh, with just one unit that um, I couldn't sell. <laughs> so I ended up renting it um, for nice. about years. And then um, I've always been interested in real estate investing. Um, I currently have a, a triplex, but I'm starting to, I'm trying to get back into, you know, running out more more um, and increasing the portfolio. So that the I, number of doors. I basically do that in retirement from my career. So. Yeah. Oh, so you're trying to eventually like wean yourself out of your nine to five. Exactly. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, that's, that's usually the case, you know? Um, so there's a quick calculation and, um, I think David Lindahl does it uh, the best. It's it's a really quick calculation, but basically you want to see what you currently make yearly, you know, that you're comfortable with. If you need to make more than what you currently make, then you could keep that in mind. But what let's say you make 70 grand a year uh, and then you take that number, you divide it by the number of doors and then you do the math and go, okay, so if I want to make 70 grand a year, I need X, Y number of doors. And so you start the purchase of okay, that's my game plan, right? So that's one thing I recommend because you're going in with a clear picture of exactly where you need to be. So let's say you're, you know, maybe three doors is great. Don't get me wrong, but how long is three doors going to take you to become, you know, the status that you want? Um, So what I would recommend is what they call economies of scale. And the way you do that is, syndications i can't get on my own in a whatever 100 unit on my own but if i have investors on my team that also invest and i have other managing partners and property management company then i could invest in bigger deals so let's say my profit in the three unit let's say it's thirty six thousand dollars a year well, with the, let's say, 150 unit, I'm looking at profits of 90,000, uh, you know, or, or greater. You, you see what I'm saying? It's not, I'm not giving you exact numbers, Heath, but it's the economy of scales is so much bigger. So basically that same three, uh, three unit, add two zeros to the, the, the profits. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So, I mean, and don't get me wrong. I, I've done five units. I've done six units and I still think they're good. They're not bad, but I just think there's a quicker way to get there. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all about the number door and like what you're making. For. So, yeah. But that's awesome. I like the way you were kind of thrown into it, right? Like you're like, yeah. do or die. I have to rent the property. Yeah. And, and it actually worked out really well. Um, yeah. Cause you gained the experience. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I figured out how, um, it's not that really, really that hard, you know, cause I managed it myself. I did everything the wrong way and I still ended up doing all right. So, nice. um, you know, cause I was super cheap. I didn't want to like <laughs> list with anybody. It's one of the reasons why I didn't sell whenever I first sell, sold it. And, and, um, you know, just, uh, the experience of dealing with tenants and some, you know, issues. We had a couple of problems that, that I had to deal with. And I was like, when I sit down at the end of the year and I figure out, you know, well, I put them this much time into it and this is what I made. Um, you know, there's not really many other places where you can make five or $600 an hour. So nice. Know, nice. That's good profits for sure. Up to, I was just like, that can't be right. It was. <laughs> that's awesome. And, and yeah, and let me tell you, that's why I always highly recommend investing in real estate. I don't care if it's a single family. I don't care if it's whatever you want to call it because uh, you're getting your feet wet. You're getting you're gaining the experience, and especially with syndications, you really want to get in syndicating because uh, you could either invest passively or do your own syndications. But the thing is, it's the law of one. Once you have one syndication, my God, from there on, it just trickles. Then you get another deal, and another bank starts sending you deals. The next thing you know, you have a few deals um, in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That's awesome. And uh, Giovanni, if you would, the same question, like tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you're currently doing in this space. Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, awesome. uh, I've been doing uh, flipping for uh, a long while. So my base recently is like, I, I realize, you know, you know how flipping is, you know, it just comes and goes. It's good money. Mm-hmm. But I realize that I'm, I'm leaving money on the table, you know, 
So uh, and now I'm, I'm holding for, you know, uh, there's some properties that they were, you know, far from uh, the, the metro area and they were fine just to, to flip them. But then there are, there, there's a group of them that I regret having the salt, you know, like, I mean, I, I make, I was happy at the moment <laughs> and complain, but nowadays like, oh shoot, you know, if I could have made more money. Yeah, well, especially the area, you know, like when you're talking about, I, I, I'm, my area is uh, predominant East Cobb in, 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 in Georgia. In yeah. And, you know, a great school district, you know, and, and, and yeah, property had gone through the roof there. And I had like five of those around here. Wow. And I, it is funny. And even like, yeah, in this area, I remember there was one that, and like, no, not far from here that it took me, it was so hard for to sell. It was a 2000 square feet, like a four, like a four, two and a half. And it was hard to sell for $185,000, you know, like, but then be, this is like probably 2018 or something like that. Oh yeah, the market was crazy then. Yeah, and it was so you know like it's just like the the changing uh, faces of the market, you know. But then like, and actually it was unheard of to make more than I don't know like forty thousand dollars per deal. You know, it's like if you make forty thousand, you know, you were you were doing great, doing great. Yeah, and nowadays like <laughs> that's like I don't even touch that. You know. Like, <laughs> And let me tell you, it's funny because I don't know if you guys you guys have noticed, but it's kind of like the same. We're going through the same part of the cycle again. We're back to 2006, 2007, 2008. We're just, you know, it's just not the same world that we were in before, but we're basically in a, in a recession, right? You know, um, obviously the interest rates are higher. It's getting harder to qualify. There's a lot more people out in the market, but that being said, it's still a great market. There's still money to be made. And it's kind of like back then, I remember everyone with a pulse was getting a loan, right? Remember, everybody was getting planned, uh, what's it called? Like uh, B paper loans. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, if you were breathing, you were getting loans back then. And what ended up happening is I like that, you know, that's been eradicated a little bit, um, but you're still in a market where even though the interest rates are higher and even though inflation has raised, Single fam, I mean, uh, multifamily uh, real estate is still booming, and it's still it's actually doing better than ever. And the reason why, if you think about it, once people lose their homes or people sell their homes, where are they going to go live? They need somewhere to live. Apartments, you know, so people don't qualify. They had a foreclosure. Same things that happened in two thousand six. And I was an agent in Florida back then. I've been an agent since nineteen ninety nine, so I saw the market. I saw I saw that it was coming. Nobody knew it was going to be this bad though. You know, nobody I was, knew. I was in new construction in 2007, you know, and I went before the crash. You took a hit or what? Oh yeah. Like uh, we were taken to the cleaners, you know, because yeah. I was building brand new, new spec homes for like a million bucks. Oh yeah. wow. And, and then you couldn't even sell it at 300,000 after or what? No, actually no, no like uh and I, it was it was bad, but not that bad. It was bad in the sense that, because uh, uh, I, I don't know whether that still is in place right now, but I realized, you know, the the hard way that back then the bank only uh, will finance up to 600000 600, From that point up, then the buyer had to come up out of pocket with a difference. So you got a house that was a million bucks. You only have customer that on the 600,000, so you got a gap of $400,000, which is, that was that myth of like, oh, rich people always have money. No, everybody was leveraged. Like, I remember, like, I, I was in a neighborhood, like, um, where are you at? In what part of the city are you at? In Georgia, I'm over in uh, Atlanta. I'm in Atlanta proper. Okay. This was in Alpharetta, uh, Jones Creek, actually, was just, they had the city was just become new, and in Jones, Jones Creek, we had this, like, big subdivision. And, and I, you know, we got some parcel that we had developed there and yeah, it was, it, it, cost, it, it would cost me like, like $60,000 out of pocket to sell a house. It, it, a house that I built, it was sold for $60,000 cheaper than it cost me to build. Oh, wow. Yeah. So why didn't, why, why wasn't your idea just to hold off on it as an exit strategy, just to hold off and see what happened? Cause you no, were over leveraged. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I, you know, I was interest only, uh, and yeah, it's just yeah. And that's the thing. Like, uh, 
you know, you you learn to, you know, like you have to like have different source of income, you know. And this one was my my only source of income, you know. So that that was tough. I I tried to rent. I got a different experience than than um, the the hit. You know, like, and yeah, uh, for me it was like I got. <laughs> I remember, like, I got, I rented my house to a that that last house. I was able to rent it to a a, a pastor, and he's like, he was in a hurry. I was in a hurry. He put uh, like twenty thousand dollars just to get into. But the rent was, but this what we're talking about, two thousand and eight, right? Like everything was super cheap back then. But the rent was four thousand dollars, you know. So that's not a cheap rent. Not this at all. It's a huge house. Yeah, but you're talking about a million dollar home. Yeah, you're talking about a million dollar home. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that was probably the only payment that I got from that guy. <laughs> and then what? Then, he uh he was foreclosed you know, on? I, yeah, I had to uh I had to beat him, you know, it's just like it was a whole nightmare, you know. And eventually I I lost the house. Eventually I couldn't keep up, you know, because it was the payments were like six thousand dollars. Nobody will refinance you. you what know, is what is the money. lesson that you learned, Giovanni? Well, the people in that, uh, you know, you know what's the funny thing? I mean, just soon I finished with the idea is like all around me, all around the house, everybody was going belly up. And remember, I got my neighbor next door. And just to give you an idea, the girl across, the, the lady that lives across the street was an ex-wife of Sugar Ray Leonard. So that's the kind of community. The boxer, and, Sugar Ray Leonard. Exactly, exactly. So that's a, her, her, her ex-wife uh, house, and I remember I got this neighbor, and she was a royal pain in the ass. And you know, like, you know, like a tree, everything, everything has to be perfect, and you know. And I remember like they had like these nice cars, and, and you know, everything. And like three months later, four months later, they're they're, they're being evicted. Everybody was, le- and, you know, talking about lessons, like, because we always think, oh, people with money don't have money. No, like there's a portion of the population that is over leveraged. The whole yeah. time, well, yeah. most of the, most everybody's leverage, uh, over yeah. leverage. So, so yeah. that was one of the big ones. And just like um, my listeners, I didn't know the market that well. I didn't know what you didn't know back the, then. Yeah, I didn't know the, well, those were the pitfalls. Like, oh, you know, like don't like nowadays. I'm more cautious. Like, I don't get a house in houses bigger than six hundred thousand just for because of that. I don't touch that market. And uh, and, and Mark, you know. <laughs> that that's the thing like you you need knowledge you know you need knowledge to get into the market that's that's the main thing you know? yeah so. yeah that's that's a great tip too um so one of the things that i do is before i go into a market is i study the market so even before when i moved into my house same thing before i moved to georgia same thing uh before i bought my condos in hollandale beach same thing what i do is i research the market then after researching the market then I researched the sub market, mm-hmm. right? And then it go even further to go straight into the neighborhood. And then in that same neighborhood, I want to see how the that block, the, the property sitting at, how that block is performing. And obviously, you know, if it's doing good, great. If it's not, then is there, is there anything that I could work on improving the property? And if not, then I'll look for a property like, you know, the, the old cliche, the the ugly house in the in the nicest neighborhood, right? That's right. the house I'm looking for. Uh, you know, when looking for, house, I don't I don't invest in houses anymore. I just sold my house. I'm really liking the fact that I don't own right now. My God, there's such peace and tranquility at it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm enjoying it right now. Maybe in the future I'll I'll buy a home again. Uh, but right now I'm I'm really liking the flexibility. Um. And it be, while we're talking about a little bit of everything, guys, so I, uh, you know, I've been a realtor, like I said, since like 1999, and I started in Miami, Florida. And um, what I wanted to tell you guys is the company that I'm currently with, if you guys need a referral, like you both mentioned that you didn't want to work with agents, I get that. But in the future, if you consider wanting to work with an agent for X, Y reason, um, give me a call because what I do is I'm not currently active because I'm more focusing on the syndication, but what I could do is I could refer you to the perfect agent from my Rolodex. So I'll be able to go through, okay, you want multifamily? This is a perfect agent. I have worked with them. I know how they work. They're great. They're going to be great for you because of this specific thing. 
and I'm going to research the best person for you. Obviously, I'm going to get a little cut for doing that. But the main reason I like to do that is because I still have great connections. I still know everybody in the industry and in both Florida and Georgia. And so, and not only that nationwide, I have a, a great network. So I'd like to add value. If there's anything I could do for you guys, like I said, introduce you to somebody or also, you know, um, refer you to someone to sell your deal, to buy your deal. And I always have buyers. So if you have something to sell, trust me, I have a buyer's list ready to buy. Um, and anything from like uh, 16 units all the way to like 400 units, easy. Um, let me see something. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to, I also, I, you know, cause I've been pretty much like in every stage of the, you know, the, no, every, no, every, but at least are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I okay. know uh, that you might, my, 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 my screen went black all of a sudden. Uh, Do you see so, me or no? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All that time went blank and then you, you came back. Uh, but I've been pretty much, you know, like I've, you know, build, building a spec homes. I've done flips. I've done a uh, wholesaling. Uh, which I still do. I still do a little bit of everything. And now I'm doing more like holding, uh, what is that? Like a, like short-term lease, you know, the Airbnb phase of that. But I also do, I do harmony lending for, nice. for investors. I got like a small company. I mean, it's not, uh, you speak Spanish, right? Yeah, you all español, but I don't know if the other people do. But yeah, yeah I know, I know, I, know, I, know, I don't know. think Heath does. No, 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 I don't want to do that too. But I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll translate it afterward. Go ahead. No, 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 that's fine. No, no, no. I'm, I'm okay either way. No, no the, the reason I asked is because I, I that's kind of like my mission that because like, I do have people that I know that they, actually is the hardest part. It, people that are sitting in you know in, in in you know two two million dollars worth of property, but they have like six you know five properties that pay off, but they don't know. And this is the part that I didn't know when I started. I didn't know because I, I started with you know, buying cash properties. That's when properties were cheap. You know, when pro we, you can buy properties here for fifty thousand bucks. Then you buy cash and you fix it for with thirty thousand dollars, and you make thirty thousand dollars profit. Yeah. But uh, what I'm trying is to teach uh, at least the, the Hispanic community what you know how to leverage, how to like you know, like I said, like these people that they can cash out you know, on a property and then they can move to bigger things. They can do you know the things that you're doing. I love that. On their own or they can you know uh, whatever they can buy more properties you know as a bottom line yeah we should definitely touch base after this giovanni because two things one um multifamily investor nation tends to reach out after this mm -hmm. um they'll, they'll reach out to you and that you know they'll let you know what they're doing because basically uh passiveinvesting.com uh they they have over i think now over four thousand doors under management Mm -hmm. plus they also have a lending arm plus they buy car washes plus they buy self-storage so and i think they have a, are you are you guys on on a bigger pockets at all no if i not, mean, I, I, I heard of the podcast uh, and, and i see i think i've seen it but no we're not i'm not yeah. saying i've seen the podcast a few times. cool yeah i think you guys should definitely uh consider joining and again the reason why it's a small industry it sometimes you, you you think oh my god there's billions of people but it's a small industry and a, most it's it's crazy cuz this is one world right bigger pockets then you have the world of social media and like facebook and instagram and and linkedin and the funny thing is all these investors it's kind of the same cycle the same circle of of friends if you will your sphere your sphere of influence if you will and it's just a great place to, um, to you know, to to grow with these people, and with this meetup is is something you could do to to grow the list and everything else. But with these people, they're going to reach out to you because again, they have over four thousand doors, and the idea is you know to invest with them because you're going to make great profits. They invest in um, in Class A properties, right? Again, over a hundred units or more. And you're going to get profits of like seven to 8% preferred returns. Obviously, before you could get involved in their deals, you're going to need to get to know them and establish a relationship. But with what you're saying, Giovanni, I love the idea because yes, I do speak Spanish and I actually speak uh, 
total four languages. So I speak Italian and Portuguese as well. So that's something that I would also like to do is reach out to a broader audience of just everybody that I can. One of the things I have coming up now, this coming Thursday, actually, is I'm going to be going to Thailand. Oh, nice. Yeah. And one of the ideas, Thailand and Manila, is to try to expand my network. And again, come again. Have you been there before? No, this is my first. This is my first time <laughs> leaving so far outside the country, right? So, really? Yeah, I've so, gone to like the Bahamas. I've gone to plane to LA. Yeah, but I'm saying outside the country. Oh no, no, no I'm going no from here straight to to Bangkok. Oh wow! I didn't know yeah. that it was direct flights from here. Like, let me yeah. tell you. Yeah, let me tell you. But it's it's not really direct. There is there is a layover, and there's a uh, one. Um, one uh scaling flight or whatever so yeah it's it's not a direct direct flight i think yeah, it takes like huh no you yeah you know your cheapest thing is through uh through la you know like if you if you book that same flight with a layover like a, a short layover in la you, you save like a thousand bucks there damn i wish i would have known that because I, I spent a good dollar but i did have you know um you know i did some research and i did have um a travel agent helping me out a little bit uh, mm -hmm. but in the end i ended up just doing it on my own all right let me let me just touch base on a few things i wanted to let you guys know about and then after that you know we could continue on with the open forum um but you know i usually introduce myself at the beginning of the show so without with your permission i like to go through that briefly um just so you guys can know a little bit more about me and my experience um so again, I am a co-organizer for this group. This group is Multifamily Investor Nation. Um, the founder is Dan Hanford. Uh, and you guys definitely, I would, I would, if I was you guys, definitely recommend getting to know Dan Hanford. Great person all around, uh, great investor, um, very open and willing to share his information. Plus, we have this summit that you guys saw on this other page coming up now. And this summit, what's so great about it is that you're going to have over 300 experienced investors there as well. So it's definitely something where if you could go, I would definitely recommend, and it is tax deductible. So here's that summit, mfinsummit.com, and it's going to be June 12th through the 15th or through the 14th. It's going to be that Thursday through that Sunday. Um, you could use my promo code, Canis. You see it here in green, Canis. And it could save you two hundred dollars of the price of admission. Now I get it; we're all busy individuals. So let's say you can't make it there. I would still purchase the ticket because then you could have access to previous recordings. Which, by the way, there's four years uh, worth of uh, two recordings per year, as well as future recordings. So it's definitely a value pack for you know what you're getting is definitely worth it. I will be honest with you. It's going to be a good investment. It's not going to be your uh, couple hundred. It's going to be more in the thousand price range. Uh, but when it comes to raising capital, this is one of the best places to be at. You're going to have experienced investors who are literally raising capital right now. And by the way, guys, if you guys need help with a capital raiser, I'm volunteering. Whatever I could do to help you guys raise capital. I already have 1.5 in soft commitments ready to deploy. And, and growing because my list keeps growing with more uh, capital ready to deploy. Um, here's another thing I wanted to mention. I was interviewed on this show, the best ever real estate podcast with Joe Fairless. If you look here in the middle right over here is uh, Michael Blanc. You guys might be familiar with him from Bigger Pockets. He's also like a guru. He's got courses and lessons. Great guy, has great tips. Uh, he was also interviewed that same week that I was on the show. If you look at the bottom right middle of your of your left hand screen, that's me at the bottom without the beard. <laughs> and uh, the topic that I was interviewed on was five tips to boost your online network and find investors with yours truly, Carlos D. Reynoso. So that being said, guys, trust me when I tell you that I do have experience in raising capital. And I do have experience also in networking and and getting the the word out there about what you're currently doing. And uh, lastly, let me see if this could um um da, da, da. and what I was telling you guys before is if I could refer you to someone, it's very simple. You just tell me what you're looking to do. 
I find the right person for you. If for any reason that person doesn't work out, you let me know and I find you somebody else. Uh, but the people that I'm recommending you to aren't just, these people are highly vetted. And there are people that I've worked with in the past that I have, um, that I know for a fact are going to treat you well and are going to be extremely professional in what they do. Uh, so it's it's my roller deck that I share with you basically if you need a referral. Now, any questions, you, any other questions you guys might have? And lastly, again, this will be recorded. It will be edited and it will be posted on my YouTube channel. What I would do if I was you guys, go back to the YouTube channel. And if you look at previous recordings of any topic that you'd like, you could you know see them randomly, is reach out to the investors on there because a lot of those investors are experienced. And the ones that aren't, you might be able to partner up with or join them uh, on deals. Um, so literally, deals have been signed in this meetup, literally. Uh, the first one was in our, uh, when we used to meet in person, uh, we sat down, uh, one managing partner met another managing partner. They signed a contract together. They did a joint venture and they bought a 12 unit was their first experience. And later after that, we've had people join in as uh, managing partners and team up together and score deals. I myself am a managing partner. I could raise capital. I could asset management. I could do acquisitions because I've been a realtor for over 20, gosh, over 24 years now. And um, I could be boots on the ground. So, you know, I'm offering my services as well. If there's anything I could do to help you guys. And if nothing else, guys, if you guys, if there's anything I could do to help you, don't worry. I'm not going to ask for anything in return. It's not my way of doing things. I am not tit for tat. I'm more like tit. Here you go. I hope it helps you in the future. And I hope. You gain whatever you want from it. And, you know, maybe somewhere down the line, years later, if I even remember, which I probably won't, you know, I'll reach out to you. But believe me, my intention is just to add value. I, I, I really, I've been blessed over the years. And I feel that the more I give, like Zig Ziglar said, if you want to become a millionaire, give other people what they want and you'll, you'll gain millionaire status. Giovanni, you know this, with a little bit of, of money going to another country, I'm going to be a millionaire for the first time ever. So I'm excited about going to another country. <laughs> so I can finally say, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> but just kidding. But, you know, there is a good return on a uh, dollar per, per Thai bot or also per uh, Filipino dollar. Um, and there's other countries. So... Me personally, I would recommend that you guys in the future consider if you are thinking of becoming an expat. If not, don't worry about it. But if you are, uh, consider looking at other countries and kind of seeing the value of the dollar and the benefits that they have um, in case you're thinking about retiring somewhere else. And I think it's going to be more prominent in the in the years to come where other people are going to be looking at other countries. Because I think other countries are offering more benefits to American citizens to retire there these days tax benefits, all types of good goodies. I think Puerto Rico is a, it's a good uh, place too that does that. And uh, if you haven't gone, Puerto Rico is definitely a good place to visit as well. So that's that's all I have for today, guys. Anything else you guys want to discuss? Um, thank you for doing this. It's, uh, you know, I, I'm saying, you were saying the more you give, the more you get back. Absolutely. Amen. Definitely my experience as well. So. That's awesome. And let me tell you, Heath, and let me tell you, Giovanni, you guys, you have a friend in me. Anything I could do to help you out? Giovanni, we're here in Georgia. Heath, I hope. Where are you at, Heath? Georgia also, yeah. I, I'm what part? Smyrna? Smyrna? Yeah. Look, at you, you guys are right next to each other. I'm like somewhere like uh, south of you guys. I'm over in Atlanta, uh, closer to the Tucker area, right off of 285. So I could be anywhere in Georgia in 20 minutes time. Um, so yeah, I look forward to it. Now, uh, in the very near future, I'm going to go back to uh, in-person meetups. I'm going to try that again. And let me tell you guys, what I'm going to do is it'll probably be somewhere in like um, perimeter area. There's a lot of good places like Grub Burger that we used to do it at and other fine restaurants that I like there. But, you know, so I'll bring the food. I'll provide the food and drinks. You guys just bring yourselves and bring friends. 
-hmm. and uh, we'll network. We'll make a deal out of it. We'll make a, a whole day out of it. Okay. Um, there's value, look, definitely value to that too. I mean, we got used to this with COVID, but um, you know, meeting in person, I think, is a lot more uh, effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people have told me too that hey, you know, we really used to like it when we met in person, and you know, because you, you could um, kind of put a face to the person, right? It's not just like I feel like you said when you're when you personalize it in person, it just feels like oh, I have a better connection with this person. Um, so that's great. So yeah, um, look forward to that. Check me out on YouTube. And if there's nothing else, uh, this is Carlos D. Reynoso with Multifamily Investor Nation signing off. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Securing capital for your breakout, securing capital for your multifamily deals. Carlos D. Reynoso with Giovanni and Heath signing off. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. Peace. Thank you, thank you gentlemen. All righty. So that concludes our show. You guys have my contact info. I hope you guys shared yours. Um, and someone from Multifamily Investor Nation will be reaching out.